Anyways, uh, today's topic is uh, pulmonary edema. Now, edema in general means swelling. And uh, this typically occurs when fluid from inside blood vessels seeps out uh, outside the blood. You know. So when it seeps uh, outside uh, of the blood vessels, it's called edema, uh, causing swelling. And uh, this can happen either because of uh, too much pressure in the blood vessel or not enough uh, proteins in the bloodstream to hold uh, onto the fluid in the plasma. So plasma is the part of the blood that does not contain any blood, uh, blood cells. You know. Now the pulmonary edema is the term used when edema happens in the lungs and uh, the immediate uh, area outside uh, of the small blood vessels in the lungs is occupied by very tiny air sacs called the alveoli. Uh, so alveoli is uh, where the oxygen uh, from the air is picked up uh, by the blood passing by and carbon dioxide in the blood is passed uh, uh, into the alveoli to be exhaled out. And the alveoli normally have a thin wall that allows for the air exchange. And the fluids are usually kept out of the alveoli unless these walls lose their integrity. Now, the pulmonary edema occurs when the alveoli fill up with excess fluid speed that seeped out of the blood vessels. In the lung instead of the air <clears throat> excuse me and uh, this can cause problems with the exchange of gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide resulting in the breathing difficulty or the poor oxygenation of the blood sometimes this can be referred to as uh, water in the lungs you know and uh, when describing the condition to the patients because it's the simple uh, uh, words uh, just to uh, tell the patients you know, so they will better understand you know so the pulmonary edema can be caused by many different factors and it can be related to heart failure uh, called uh, cardiogenic pulmonary edema or related to other causes referred to as uh, non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema you know and the next thing is uh, what are the causes of uh, pulmonary edema well as mentioned uh, um, i just uh, told you that uh, the pulmonary edema can be broadly divided into cardiogenic and non-cardiogenic causes. And uh, some of the causes uh, uh, I'm going to explain to you. The first of all is cardiogenic causes of pulmonary edema. Now the cardiogenic causes of pulmonary edema results from uh, high pressure in the blood vessels of the lung due to poor heart function. Now uh, congestive heart failure due to the poor heart pumping function uh, heart attacks or the abnormal heart valves can lead to the accumulation of them uh, more than the usual amount of blood uh, in the blood vessels of the lungs and uh, this can uh, cause the fluid from the blood vessels to be pushed out of the alveoli as the pressure builds up you know. The next thing is uh, non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Now, the non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema can be commonly caused by number one, acute respiratory distress syndrome and the kidney failures and the high altitude pulmonary edema or the brain traumas or the uh, rapidly expanding lungs sometimes cause this one or uh, overdose of heroin, you know, or aspirin overdose and uh, other rare causes like uh, non-cardiogenic uh, pulmonary edema may include like pulmonary embolism and uh, viral infections or uh, eclampsia or the pregnant woman you know uh, but the two things i used here is uh, uh, i will explain those uh, uh, types you know of the non-cardiogenic uh, edema is the acute respiratory distress syndrome you know so this is one of the main causes 
and it's a potentially serious condition caused by the severe infection, trauma, lung injury, uh, inhalation of toxins or lung infections, uh, cocaine smoking or the radiation uh, to the lungs, you know. Uh, this condition is uh, uh, also known as ARDS, so Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. Uh, in ARDS, the integrity of the alveoli become compromised as a result of the underlying inflammatory response and uh, this leads to leaking alveoli that can fill up uh, with the fluid from the blood vessels. You know. The next thing is kidney failure. And, uh, the inability of the kidneys to excrete the fluids from the body can cause the fluid buildup in the blood vessels, resulting in the pulmonary edema. And uh, in the people with the advanced kidney disease, uh, dialysis may be necessary to remove the excess body fluids. The number third cause is the high altitude pulmonary edema. Now, which can happen uh, due to the rapid uh, ascent to the high altitudes of more than uh, uh, 10,000 feet and the brain trauma, trauma that I already told you so the cause you know uh, the next thing is who what are the risk factors and who is more likely to have the pulmonary edema well the risk factors uh, for the pulmonary edema are essentially the underlying cause of the condition and uh, there isn't any specific risk factor for pulmonary edema other than the risk factors for the uh, causative conditions. Now the next stage is the symptoms and the signs of the pulmonary edema. Well, the most common symptom of the pulmonary edema is shortness of breath uh, or breathlessness. And uh, this may be after the gradual onset uh, if the process slowly develops or it can be sudden onset if the cause is uh, acute respiratory uh, pulmonary edema, you know. And the other common symptoms may include like uh, easy fatigue, uh, more rapidly developing shortness of breath than the normal as usual uh, with the usual activities, you know. And the rapid breathing, you know, known as uh, tachy, uh, sorry, uh, tachypenia, you know. And dizziness and weakness. And uh, low oxygen uh, levels, you know, hypoxia may be detected in the patients with the pulmonary edema and uh, upon examination of the lungs with the stethoscope a doctor uh, will listen the abnormal lung sounds such as the rails or the crackles you know uh, so which means the uh, discontinuous short bubbling sounds you know uh, corresponding to the uh, splashing of the fluid in the alveoli during the breathing you know uh, the next thing is uh, uh, should you consult the doctor? Uh, well, the medical attention should be sought for anyone who is diagnosed with pulmonary edema of any cause. And uh, many causes of pulmonary edema require hospitalization, especially if uh, they are caused uh, acutely, you know. And uh, uh, in some cases, uh, like long term pulmonary edema, for example, uh, the congestive heart failure, uh, routine follow up visits, with the treating doctor may be recommended and uh, you should visit uh, the doctor regularly and uh, most cases of the pulmonary edema are treated by internal medicine doctors you know and uh, the heart specialists uh, or the lung specialists known as pulmonologists you know uh, the next thing is uh, how your doctor will diagnose that you have the pulmonary edema well, the pulmonary edema is typically diagnosed by the physical examination, history and the x-rays, uh, the imaging tests, you know. And uh, a normal chest radiograph uh, consists of the central white area uh, pertaining to the heart and its main blood vessels plus the bones of the vertebral column uh, with the lung fields showing uh, uh, as uh, darker fields on either side enclosed by a bony structure of the chest wall, you know. This is the normal anatomy. You know. Now a typical chest x-ray with the pulmonary edema may show a more white appearance over both lungs uh, than un, uh, usually, you know. And uh, more severe causes of pulmonary edema can demonstrate significant uh, 
opacification, which means whitening uh, over the lung with the minimal visualization of the normal lung fields. And this whitening re represents the filling of the alveoli as a result of the pulmonary edema. And, but it may give uh, minimal information about the possible underlying cause. But you have an idea that you need to further investigate the cause of the pulmonary edema. Now, to identify the cause of pulmonary edema, uh, a thorough assessment of the patient's clinical picture is essential and a careful medical history and physical examination is needed, you know. And other diagnostic tools uh, uh, may include like uh, uh, intraminal uh, probe uh, BNP, you know. Uh, so, or the uh, B-type uh, uh, uh peptide, you know, which is known as uh, BNP, you know. And uh, this is a pre protein marker, you know, uh, that will rise uh, in the blood due to the uh, stretch of uh, the chambers of the heart, you know. And the elevation of the BNP uh, a nanogram a per liter greater than a few hundred is highly suggestive of the cardiac pulmonary edema. So, on the other hand, the values less than 100 essentially rule out the heart failure as the cause, you know. And uh, the more invasive methods are occasionally necessary to distinguish between the cardiac and the uh, non-cardiac uh, pulmonary edema uh, in more complicated and the critical situations, you know. And the pulmonary artery catheter uh, is a thin, uh, long tube inserted into uh, the large veins of the chest uh, or the neck and it advanced through the um, uh, right-sided chambers of the heart and lodged into the pulmonary capillaries, which are the small branches of the uh, uh, blood vessels uh, of the lungs, you know. So this device is uh, uh, has the capability of uh, directly measuring the pressure in the pulmonary vessels called the pulmonary artery wedge pressure. Now, a wedge pressure of 18 mmHg or higher is, is uh, consistent with the cardiogenic uh, pulmonary edema. Now, always the uh, wedge pressure is less than 18 and the favors, it favors a non cardiogenic cause of pulmonary edema. Now, once diagnosed, then what are the treatment options? Uh, now, the treatment of the pulmonary edema largely depends on its cause and the severity, and uh, most cases of uh, uh, cardiac pulmonary edema are treated uh, by using the diuretics, which is uh, also known as the water pills, you know, along with other medications of the heart failure. And uh, in some situations, appropriate treatment can be achieved as a an outpatient by taking uh, oral medication, you know. And if the pulmonary edema is more severe, uh, you may need the, uh, and it's not responding to the oral medications, and the hospitalization may be needed, and use of intravenous diuretics, uh, and uh, may be necessary, you know. And the treatment of the non-cardiogenic causes of pulmonary edema varies depending on the cause. For example, the severe infection uh, is treated with antibiotics, and uh, the kidney failure needs to be uh, evaluated and managed, you know. And uh, oxygen supplementation is necessary if the uh, uh, measurement level of oxygen level in the blood is low, you know, and uh, if it's too low, you know, and uh, if serious conditions such as ARDs, uh, uh, placing patients on a mechanical breathing machine is necessary you know, to support their breathing. And the next thing is uh, what are the complications? Well, the most complications of pulmonary edema may arise from the complications associated with the underlying cause. And uh, more specifically, pulmonary edema can cause severely compromised oxygenation of the blood uh, by the lungs, you know. And uh, this poor oxygenation, uh, known as hypoxia, can uh, potentially lead to uh, diminished oxygen delivery to the different body organs, such as the brain, you know, and uh, which can uh, be a serious thing, you know. Uh, the most of the patients ask, uh, is it preventable? Well, in terms of preventive measures, that depending on the cause of the pulmonary edema, you know, and uh, some steps can be taken, like uh, long-term prevention of the heart disease and the heart attacks, and uh, slow the elevation uh, to the uh, high altitudes, 
are violence of uh, drug overdo overdose such and uh, which can be uh, considered preventative and on the other hand some causes may not be completely avoidable such as the rds due to the overwhelming infection or the trauma you know i thank you very much for watching this video if you need more information you can visit our website www that diseases and treatment.com and please do not forget to subscribe this channel for more informative videos every day thank you and goodbye